Hi doctor, so I have this posterior open bite case um, where we can we need to diagnose where the posterior open bite came from in order to solve it appropriately. So looking at the molars and looking at the angle of these molars, my um, educated guess is that these were attempted to be expanded and they tipped out instead. That's going to be difficult to solve. It's going to be require attachments on these uh, molars and trying to tip them back or elastics. But what we also see is an anterior interference where the initial occlusion is pretty much right here. Um, there might be some, uh, yep, yeah, right towards the anterior. So if you can imagine how much better these teeth would come together if we could just get the upper and lower anterior away from each other. And so that is going to be my first step and then see what occlusion through the premolars and possibly through the molars we might pick up. And then you can choose a different approach to solve these molars if you want to. Um, so the initial way that most aligned treatment plans are is to uh, extrude whatever teeth together to get these to touch each other. Um, that is difficult to do and and really the opposite thinking of what we need to do. So I've already sent in a few comments and have a little bit more cleaned up clin check here where the premolars are not extruding as much, but still a little bit. So I'm just gonna fix this up with the 3D controls. Um, so I like having retention attachments throughout the premolars that it ensures that your case is going to work out better no matter what type of movements you're doing because the aligner is gonna be well engaged with the arch. So what we can see is that we have uh, this canine rotating in so that gives us a little bit more room across the upper um, and so let's do this first so I just type the number zero and press enter to eliminate that extrusion I'll do that on all of these teeth and I'm not going to worry about that IPR that pops up right now because I may need to do a few other buccolingual adjustments and that just might go away. So now I have a better view of what I realistically need to set these lower anterior teeth, how I need to set them to match the rest of the lower arch. So what you can do is you can press control and then you can move all these teeth at once. It just saves a little bit of time. And that is the outcome that I'm looking for. That is where I want to pull these lower anterior teeth out. Now you can do this thing with a line that's called the like virtual jump. I don't find that to be very accurate. And so I just set this up where I have equal amount of space or close to it in the anterior as I do in the posterior and then just imagine these as two models of teeth that would just come together um, and we can't the reason I don't like the virtual jump as much is because you don't know exactly how a mandible is going to work and the computer system just does it vertically so then I kind of look down here and see are, are the lower buckle cusps in in the grooves of the upper cusps and I would say yeah that looks that looks fairly close. So the least amount of movement that we have going on in the posterior is going to increase our accuracy for the lower anterior. When you're doing a refinement or additional aligners, the less movements that you're uh, doing and just focusing on the ones that you need is going to give you more of that better accurate result. So I don't need these attachments anymore on the canines. So then why did that happen? Rotation. So let's look and see if this tooth really does need to rotate. Not if we're really trying to help solve this patient and get their teeth coming together better. So this is what I would do to set up a posterior open bite from an anterior interference.